Looking out to sea Where a thousand souls have prayed And a thousand lives were laid on the sand Were laid on the sand Since they have died And the world shall last And the wild goose shall fly Shall fly Looking out to see, and I say a prayer that the wild goose will come to. Hi everyone, Dave again. Welcome to our Pentecost service. Let's begin. Lord of all, we come together anxious and uncertain, yet not without hope. Huddled together, waiting for a sign, just like those apostles did in that upper room. We're a band of pilgrims made in many different ways, a diverse collection of your children, drawing alongside one another to share fellowship with each other, taking comfort from each other and to worship you. Send us your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we can share our experience of exclusion with your wider church in ways that they'll be that will be heard and they will be able to understand. Show them that all are welcome here, all are accepted here, all are allied here. There is no exclusive membership, no gold card. If you consider yourself to be a member of this community, then you are a member of this community. We lay the burdens of the weak at the foot of your cross, Jesus, and we step into the peace of your Holy Spirit anew this Pentecost. Amen. Welcome again to this sacred place, this holy ground, as real to us as any church building. Our home is here on YouTube, on Twitter and on our website. Online is where we live and have our being. These are places of welcome, open to all. Stay for as little or as long as you like. Be as involved or not as you feel comfortable being. Many of us that gather here were unable to access physical church even before there was a pandemic. And here we have been made welcome and have found a home. This is our space. Come on in and join us. We dedicate this space to those who may feel they have little to look forward to, to those who feel they have nothing to contribute, to those who have been made to feel unworthy, and today, especially, to those who feel the church season's moving on, 
the pandemic lockdown moving on, yet are still in a place of holding on and waiting for change. Father, take this place and those gathered here and make this a place of hope and encouragement, a place of refuge, a place of peace. To those who are new here, we say welcome. To those who are familiar faces, we say welcome. To those who are confident in their place here, we say welcome. To those who are unsure if we will include everyone, we say welcome. To those who are angry, sad or confused, we say lay down your burdens for a while and welcome. To those who are seeking the joy in the sadness, we say alleluia and welcome. To those who join us at a later date or time, you are welcome. To those who may be afraid of what is being asked of us, we say send us your spirit, Lord. And above all, Jesus, we welcome you into our presence. This is your temple, Lord. Although there are no walls, the web is where we gather, as real to us as any church. Computers, phones and tablets are our prayer books. Our prayers float in the ether like incense across the sanctuary. Fellowship comes in many forms and ours is here, online. Let us take a few moments to consider the times when we have not acted as we would have liked this week. For the times we have not understood the needs of another or ourselves, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have not been able to keep our manners or our tempers, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have not been able to share or receive, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have allowed our fear to have control, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have undervalued someone, God forgive us. For the times we have not recognised or challenged our inherent prejudices, we say, God forgive us. For the times we have not kept scrolling and kept out of the argument, we say, God, forgive us. For the times we have not invited you into the centre of our lives, we say, God, forgive us. In asking your forgiveness, gracious God, help us to be transformed. Send your Holy Spirit to give us new words and a new enthusiasm, that we might live as people of your kingdom, following your way and trusting your wise counsel. Open our hearts, Lord, to the warmth of your love. Amen. Though we are far apart, let us feel a closeness. Let us reach out across the ether, unite us across time and space. Teach us to be alone, yet together. Though we are socially distanced, let us feel your touch, the warmth of your love enfolding us. Jesus, as we reflect on this time in your story when you sent your Holy Spirit, help us to be open to the abundant gifts the Spirit has to offer. For this space where we can express our emotions in safety, we thank you. For a service 
we are able to attend easily. We thank you. For people who understand, we thank you. For a place where we feel safe, we thank you. God of light, a light that breaks through the darkness. A light that penetrates all hidden corners. A light that comes to us through a little child born in Bethlehem. We have followed your star and it has brought us here. May we continue to diligently search for him each day so that we may offer our lives to you in joy and thanksgiving. Teach us a new song, Lord, a song for those who go unsung. Praise the ones that do our dirty work, the pushers of chairs, the wipers of bums, the makers of tea, the givers of meds. Teach us that new song, Lord, that lets them know they are loved. The ones who put their own dreams on hold, Lord, that give until they are spent. The ones who get up again the next day and do it all over again in the full knowledge that it will leave them spent. The ones who go unnoticed, Lord, quietly meeting our needs, yet keep us rolling along. Teach us to say thank you, Lord, for every ounce of care. God, now let us bring before you those we know of in need of you at this time. In a moment of silence, we hold them before you and ask for your blessing on their lives. Those who cannot see, he walks with as guide. He whispers softly to those he cannot hear. He soothes those whose minds are troubled. He rides with those who cannot walk. He guides the pain of those whose pain cannot be seen and brings insight to those who appear not to understand. God of hope, bring us love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into this world, be the joy that dwells between us. We certainly do seem to have been journeying through Acts recently. I don't think it's a coincidence that God is drawing us in to look at the very earliest expression of church, the followers of the way, and how they demonstrated inclusivity, solidarity and love. I'm excited to see where that journey leads us, but for today we pause and explore Pentecost. The image of Pentecost with the flames of the Holy Spirit sitting on the heads of the disciples, is a powerful one in our collective psyche. My Pentecost image is a little different. I was in a rather high Anglican church one year at Pentecost, where I was at that time serving in the choir. And the curate had put glitter in the oil she was using to anoint us with. I had knelt at the altar, palms outstretched as I usually did, out of habit. And alongside the golden glittery cross she drew on my forehead, she drew one on my palm. When I opened my eyes and saw the sparkling cross there, I felt a profound sense of the spirit with me, resting with me. My eyes opened to her and my soul soaring with her. I felt seen, understood and known. I went to that curate afterwards she looked at me and smiled and said, I knew that glitter was for someone. I just didn't know who. Well, it most certainly was for me because seven years on, I still remember that Pentecost as a seismic shift in my relationship with God. As the first Pentecost was. Imagine those grieving lost apostles having just said goodbye to Jesus for the second time. 
wondering what now. Could they really trust Peter, who always put his foot in it, to lead them? Would James make a leadership challenge as the family heir to Jesus? Mary would know what to do, but is the wider world ready for a woman leader? All of that would have been blown to nothingness by the mighty wind that swept through that upper room and the flames that followed. The outpouring of tongues and the ministering to the crowds. Drunk? Us? No, just full of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. I doubt if they stood there looking at each other thinking, we can't go out looking like this. What will the neighbours think if I start speaking in Phrygian? But we do, don't we? I don't want to ask Jane if she would like me to pray for her because she'll think I'm silly. Or, I don't really want to speak to Ahmed about our different faiths because that makes me vulnerable. But what of the opportunities? Act 2 tells us about 3,000 became believers that day because the apostles said yes to the Spirit. Their community grew because they reached out and spoke. They found fellowship beyond themselves with all the richness and diversity of Jews, Gentiles, Arabs, Egyptians and so many more. Can you imagine the culture, the music, the cloth, the spices, the stories, the dances, what more there was to share? Which is exactly what the Bible tells us they did. We recognise in our community, we have people who use verbal English, written English, alternative and augmentative communication tools and technologies. Makaton signs and symbols, BSL, widget symbols, subtitles, lip reading, braille, screen readers, and I have no doubt many other languages and language tools. We would love to be like the apostles at Pentecost and have someone sharing our contact in each format for each individual who needs it. However, it is not within our power at the moment and as much as we would love for our churches in buildings to have more accessibility in their services, they are faced with the same resource issues. However, just because we don't have flames above our heads doesn't mean we can't have the same attitude of the spirit, an attitude of inclusivity. When we welcome people, make it known that we have this attitude and any access requests are welcome. That doesn't mean asking them, do you need BSL? Because we can't do that, sorry, but you're welcome to be here and take what we do for everyone else. That is ableism. It means being willing to discuss needs and options in a collaborative partnership where the person feels valued and heard where specific requirements are actively worked towards and where support is there for the journey until they can be put in place. Sadly, many churches are nowhere near that first step even. We hope you all know our DMs are always open and where we may not be able immediately to meet every need now, if we know of them, we will do our utmost to get there with you. May we all have the faith to put glitter in oil for no earthly reason, just because God nudges us to. May we all have the faith to send that speculative Twitter message to that canny bloke on the internet who runs that prayer account that gets you chatting and leads to you finding a gift for disability theology. May we all have that faith to step into the uncomfortable, should I, shouldn't I, place where the spirit beckons, even without the confidence of a flame on our heads. 
but with the strength of the one in our hearts. That in following, we may have an impact that defies all our wildest imaginations. Peace be with you. Amen. When we huddle together, locked away, scared and uncertain, send us your spirit, Lord. When we need prayer, may we remember this community is here and someone in this community somewhere will be praying the office. When we need a place to lean into and no others will meet our needs in the name of Jesus, may we remember this community is here. And may the peace that comes with the knowledge of community, shared endeavour and common understanding be with us all, always. By the Spirit left with us, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>